tonight, word of an untimely death. Kurt Cobain was the lead singer of the group Nirvana. Their albums were bestsellers, their songs filled with images of despair and violence. One lyric, the sun is gone, but I have a light, the day is done, but I'm having fun. And then this morning, his body found at home, another casualty of success. All right, man, back again. Another episode of REOPD Classified. So last episode I did with the homie Banks. It was on the Tuskegee Experiment. Got a lot of good feedback on that. So shout out to everybody that checked that episode out. Um, I'm just going to get into this one. This is not a long episode. It's uh, pretty cut and dry. This episode of REOPD Classified, which is episode four, is on the 27 Club. So if you're not familiar with the 27 Club, let me go through a quick definition of it. The 27 Club is a list of mostly popular music, I mean, sorry, musicians, artists, or actors who died at the age of 27. Often these deaths are results of drug and alcohol abuse. 90% of the deaths come from a high risk partying lifestyle. The 27 Club wasn't made aware to anybody until the deaths of Brian Jones, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin. They all died around the same time at the age of 27. So before doing my research, I thought the 27 Club was just musicians, but there are some artists on the list and actors. An example, Jonathan Brandis and Basquiat. The 27 Club isn't just musician exclusive, and this is one club your ass don't want to be a part of. Many believe the members of the 27 Club sold their souls to the devil in exchange for money and fame, and as a result, they lost their lives at the age of 27. So as of right now, there are 89 members of the 27 Club. I'm going to go over some of the most notable names to me. First on the list, Robert Johnson. He is, in fact, the first ever person to be inducted into the 27 Club. He's also the most mysterious person on the 27 Club because there are not that many pictures of him and there's not many audio recordings of his music. Robert Johnson was a legendary guitarist who is believed to have sold his soul to the devils at a crossroad for money and fame. Apparently, bro was like ass at the guitar and he was hitchhiking and uh, they let him off at a crossroad and he saw the devil at the crossroad and he got to his knees and begged the devil to make him the best guitarist in the world. The devil asked him for his guitar and tuned his guitar up. But that may be bullshit because there's no real footage or recordings of Robert Johnson ever being bad at the guitar. Just him being really good at it pretty much there's not much songs out of from him but all the songs out from him are him being good at the guitar so it's no proof that he was ever bad but before robert johnson allegedly sold his soul to the devil his wife and son died while his wife was giving birth and robert johnson's wife family blamed their deaths on robert johnson making secular music so he pretty much said, fuck it, y'all already think I'm the devil, I might as well just go all in and sell my soul to the devil, if that allegedly happened. But on August 16th, 1938, Robert Johnson died in Mississippi at the age of 27. Robert was smashing a club owner's wife, and the club owner spiked his drink with mothballs. Next on this list is a popular Chicago drill rapper by the name of Fredo Santana. When I was in jail just recently, and like people was writing me, a lot of people was writing me, and they was like, yeah, um, Keith, he got this song, 300, and Soldier Boy just did the remix. That's when I was like, man, when I get out, man, I ain't finna play around no more, fuck, you know? Fuck that shit, I'm going straight straight in, you know? As soon as I got out, man, I went to go grab me a, a what, a fifth of Remy, a box of blunts, and went straight to Keith. A lot of my listeners definitely know who Fredo Santana is. Fredo died on January 19, 2018 while in his sleep. Fredo suffered a fatal seizure due to his cardiovascular disease. This one sucks because months leading up to Fredo's death, he had a bad history with seizures due to his pill and lean consumption. At the time of his death, Fredo was clean, 
Sometimes when you abuse drugs, you fuck up your body so much, it's just hard to reverse the after effects. So, yeah, so on uh, January 19th, tragically, Fredo was a member of the 27 Club. Next on this list, Janis Joplin. She died on October 4th, 1970 of a heroin overdose. It was reported that she spent around $700 a day on heroin. That's $700 in today's money with inflation and whatnot. Not $700 back in the 70s. But uh, yeah, she spent $700 a day on heroin. On a day of her overdose, she took two times her daily heroin dosage. Um, I don't know much about Janet Joplin. I've heard of her all my life. Uh, she's considered a legend, so I'm going to respect her as a legend. I haven't really tapped in on her music like that, but I did see her last interview, is, which is on YouTube. I guess I'll play a little bit of that um, if possible, but um, she seemed like an amazing person. So um, rest in peace, Janet Joplin. She was introduced to the 27 Club on October 4th, 1970. Next one on the list is Dash Snow. The first time I was made aware of Dash Snow was on Kendrick Lamar's The Heart Part 2. In the beginning, he played uh, an excerpt from one of Dash Snow's interviews. I'll tell you what I don't believe in. <laughs> Can I do that? All right, I don't believe in the in laws or the system by any means whatsoever. I try not to obey them at any time. That's what I believe in, not believing in. So what keeps you alive? <laughs> Four big bottles of water a day, two packs of Marlboro Reds, and... I don't... That, what keeps me alive? Shit. Um, music. I, can't, I have to listen to music all day long. I'd say that, that keeps me going. I'm a pretty dark person. I've thought about ending it a million times, and I have to say the music keeps me here by far the main thing dash died on july 13th 2009 in a lower manhattan hotel of a drug overdose in 2010 kendra lamar went on to calling dash snow a legend and saying he patterned his music off of dash's not giving a fuck attitude um you're starting the hard part too you have a clip of the dash snow interview um in the beginning what made this uh, particular interview that stood out for you? And do you have a certain method, like finding clips like that for your songs? Dash no. It was just about me finding out who is this legend is in my eyes. Dash no. This is a person that said fuck all the rules. You know what I mean, so a friend told me about him. I looked him up. You know what I mean, a while back, and me just studying him and seeing how he just did what he felt and had no limitations on what the laws, I mean, he said fuck laws, fuck rules, and just did what he wanted to do, this shit was just genius to me. And I almost like to pattern my music the way he did it, you know what I mean, did his photography, you know what I mean? Right. So when I when I did the, the, the hard part too, and I put them emotion on there, it felt like I was breaking all the rules, you know what I mean? When I said this type of shit I say and how I present myself on the track, so I felt it was only right to put a cat like him on the beginning of it to, make it all come together at the end, you know what I mean? A lot of people don't know about Dash Snow, but that dude's a fucking genius, man. If you go to his work, he passed, obviously. When we go to his work and, and, and see the type of the type of way he presented his shit on a, on a level or a scale that nobody else was doing, he was a genius, man. He was ahead of his time, so. What are some of the pieces that he did that stick out for you? Oh, this is, this is, this is a crazy one where, uh, it's a piece where it's a threesome. This nigga, he, he captured this, a threesome, uh, uh, a bitch sucking this, sucking a dude dick and shit, right? Can I just cuddle with this shit? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, he <laughs> laid back like this, and another broad edge of bed smoking a cigarette. Just like wild regular shit that nobody else can capture because they feel that they get critiqued, like, oh, that's too fucking vulgar or whatnot, you know what I mean? But this cat is actually going out there and doing that, and people is looking at it like, okay, maybe he's a motherfucking crazy motherfucker but I respect because the art of this shit just looks so fucking crazy you know what I'm saying right, right. so that's why I, I I really represent this shit in my music you know what I mean so nice. next on this list Jim Morrison on July 3rd, 1971, legendary Doors frontman Jim Morrison died in his Paris hotel so uh, Jim Morrison was in Paris because he was trying to get his life together he was trying to get on drugs but he was still taking a lot of drugs 
in in uh, Paris. He was discovered by his girlfriend lifeless in their bathtub. At the time of his death, France didn't allow autopsies, so the exact death was never really discovered. But on his death certificate, it states that he died to heart failure. It was known at the time of his death, he was still heavy into heroin usage. Next one on the list, Jimi Hendrix. He's a, he's a fucking legend, man. Shout out to Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, one of the biggest legends on this list. Jimi Hendrix is considered the biggest rock and roll artist ever to walk this earth. Jimi Hendrix died on September 18, 1970 in his London hotel by choking on his own vomit. Before he died, he took a deadly dosage of barbiturates given to him by his girlfriend. And while he was sleeping, he choked on his own vomit. That's just a wild way to go out. Uh, rest in peace, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, it's, I think I'm going to do a Jimi Hendrix episode, so I'm not going to go too far into detail on this. But um, rest in peace to him. We need a real biopic, not that Andre 3000 bullshit that they dropped a couple years. We need a real deal Jimi Hendrix biopic. Next on the list, we got Amy Winehouse. This one of the ones that hit me the most because I was most of these happened before I was even alive, but I was alive during this one and it really sucked seeing her go knowing she was dealing with a lot of drug problems. It is a common misconception that at the time of Amy Winehouse death that she was sober but is in fact not true. She was still dealing with alcoholism at the time of her death. Months leading up to her death. She was literally being booed at her shows for being too drunk while performing. On the night of her death, she was in her hotel room with a bodyguard. At around 3 p.m. July 23rd, 2011, her bodyguard found Amy Winehouse in her room unresponsive. At 3.40 p.m., she was pronounced dead. Coroners confirmed that she died of misadventure. Her blood alcohol levels at the time of her death was five times over the legal limits. Also, she had a long track worker with bulimia, so that also contributed to her death. Next one on this list, another legend. Well, they all legends, man. Uh, Kurt Cobain. Now, I'm not going to do too much details on this because I am going to do a whole Kurt Cobain episode because it's a lot of conspiracies surrounding his death. I will say this though, this is hands down the most controversial one out of anybody on this list. On April 8th, 1994, I was fucking four years old when this happened, this is crazy. An electrician was in the area working on security lights for Kurt Cobain's mansion because he was having a lot of uh, Nirvana fans going around trying to uh, spy on him, so he was trying to... He uh, pretty much was trying to get some security lights installed and whatnot. So an electrician while working on the lights discovered Kurt Cobain in his greenhouse with blood coming out of his head. Kurt's death was ruled a suicide at the time of the discovery. Kurt had been dead three days. Like I said, the Kurt Cobain episode coming soon, so I'm just going to leave it right here. I got my ideas on what happened. I'm not sure if it's a suicide, but y'all gonna have to wait and see that see that episode when that comes out. But that's the list. But there are also people that narrowly miss the list. An example: Otis Redding, who died at the age of 26, missing the list by 274 days. Or rapper Mac Miller, who died at the age of 26, missing the list by four months. Also, while doing my research, I saw some shit apparently like Uzi Vert was kind of like predicting he'll be the 27 club. Listen here. At age 27, I will leave this earth for this man right here. He's the Pell Emperor. All right, man. Get up. Yeah, get off that bullshit, man. He, he's ridiculous. I seen he did like a little IG live with like Fat Joe or some shit. And he was saying, oh, I think I'm going to be in the 27 club. As an OG, Fat Joe should have stepped in and said, hey, stop the nonsense, but uh, Fat Joe, I don't, I don't know. This not a Fat Joe bashing episode, but he's a weirdo, man. But yeah, uh, Uzi, yeah, Uzi tripping. Hopefully, he does not make the list. Also, it's rappers uh, like uh, Juice World 
who predicted saying that he was going to be in the 21 club and we all know in fact juice world died at the age of 21 which is unfortunate but uh some people may say that when you say certain things some people may say when you speak certain things into existence the atmosphere gives it to you back or the the world gives it to you back or whatever something like that y'all know what i'm talking about uh i will say this do i believe in the 27 club not quite i just think everything is is a coincidence you gotta think it's been thousands and millions and whatever artists and the 27 club is only a small percentage of everybody that came out uh it's only as of right now it's only 89 members if in fact that there's a club where you give your soul to the devil and he just takes your life at 27 for fame and money i don't know because we got a lot of artists that just die young that's just that's just how things are you uh you live a crazy lifestyle you get money you get fame you get fortune and then you just up those things you start using more drugs you start partying more and it takes a toll on your body even at a young age and unfortunately it took a toll on most of these people and they died on the age of 27 so that's just how it is i don't think there's any kind of like um blood sacrifice that you just with the illuminati and shit like that you give your soul in exchange and you just die at 27 or you just fuck something up and they like all right we're gonna take you now and just i don't know i just don't think it is uh i just think everything's a coincidence if y'all get what i mean but yeah i don't think there's kind of any kind of illuminati sacrifice with it so i don't know man but yeah it's crazy to die at the age of 27 i'm 31 right now so i couldn't imagine going out four years ago i feel like my life just really started at the age of fucking 29 to be exact so um yeah it's crazy rest in peace to everybody on this list everybody was an icon most of the 27 list consists of people that made great impacts on people's lives in just a short amount of time they were on this earth that's basically the end of the episode um like i usually say if y'all got any uh recommendations for future episodes just drop those down in the comments Everybody that has dropped something in the comments, I've added that to the list. We're going to get that soon. We'll get that rocking and rolling. I'm going to get these out a little bit more quicker. Um, next episode, I'm actually recording the next episode this week with the homie Banks. We're going to talk about Cointel Pro, and we're going to give some of our thoughts on the new movie Judas and the Black Messiah. And um, with all that said, I am out.